Hi Patriots, today we are going to talk about prepping pushback. By prepping I mean when you store up extra food, water, or daily needs because they may be hard to come by or get very expensive in the future. And by pushback I mean when your loved ones, your spouse, and or your friends think you are crazy for wanting to prepare for hard times and they won't do it themselves. I'm making this video because I've had a ton of you reach out to me regarding this issue. And so today I'm going to give you some resources to share with your loved ones that are against prepping, or perhaps uh, you could just show them this video and maybe we'll change some minds. If someone sent you this video to watch because they want you to prep, just keep in mind that it's because these people love you and they want you to thrive in the days ahead. Or perhaps they just don't want to share their freeze-dried corn chowder with you in the future. <laughs> but either way, I think that a few minutes of your time will be well spent here today and perhaps we'll gain a new perspective about what prepping actually is. All right, the main arguments we'll be addressing today are Number one, prepping is not biblical. Storing up food and water for the future is a direct indication that you are not trusting God to provide. Number two, prepping is a waste of time and money. And number three, it is never going to get that bad here in America. And besides, nothing is even happening that would lead me to become a prepper. So let's dive into the number one argument that I hear most frequently, and that is that prepping is not biblical. It is a direct indication that you are not trusting God to provide. If we use the argument that God wants us not to prepare because he wants us to trust in his provision, we run into a few hiccups. For those of you that believe in this argument, let me ask you a few questions. One, do you have a job? Do you get up in the morning and go to work? Because if you do, you are not trusting God to provide, my friend. You should be able to sit around and do what you want all day because God's going to supernaturally provide for you and your family. Your food, your bills, etc. You should be able to walk outside and pick $100 bills like manna off the trees. What about saving for retirement? Are you spending everything you have or giving it all away knowing that the day you stop working or that you can't work anymore that God's just going to send you a sack of gold in the mail every month to provide for you? Do you have a weather app on your telephone? Because that is crazy unbiblical. You should be trusting God to supernaturally download the weather into your spirit each day on whether or not you'll need a jacket or an umbrella. Anyone who looks at a weather app at the week ahead and what the weather is going to be like, blasphemy! What about booking a reservation or making a monthly budget? Please excuse my heavy sarcasm, but I am trying to drive home the point that preparing is an everyday part of life, is an active part of wise stewardship, and has been used by God to take care of his people many times over. And let me show you by using some examples in the Bible. God gave Joseph the ability to interpret dreams to prepare Pharaoh's kingdom for seven years of famine. This is from Genesis 41. Then let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain for food in the cities under Pharaoh's authority and let them guard it. Let the food become as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine so that the land will not perish during the famine. If Joseph isn't a big enough name for you, let's move on to Noah. This is from God talking to Noah, preparing him for what was about to happen so he could save himself and his family from destruction. As for you, take for yourself some of all food which is edible and gather it to yourself, and it shall be for food for you and your household. Thus Noah did according to all God commanded him. If I think about it, I think what's happening when someone thinks that prepping isn't biblical is that they are correlating greedy hoarding and an obsession with self-preservation with using wisdom and discernment to prepare your family for the future. They are two very different actions and very different attitudes, and you don't need the Bible to tell you that. But just in case you do, let's look at the parable of building bigger barns. Not to be confused with Joe Biden's Build Back Better. Build Back Better is much worse. In Luke 12, speaking of Jesus, And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. The lesson of this verse is not to not store up food and water for yourselves when you see that we're in the beginning of a global supply chain food crisis with steeply rising inflation. 
the message is to keep God's kingdom your priority and not to be obsessed with worldly things. Just like with making money, prepping doesn't become a bad thing or evil unless you make it your everything or it takes your eyes off of God. God has given you the gift of information and warning just as he did in his word in the past so that you can prepare for your future. He has his part and you have yours. Speaking of being unbiblical, let me ask you a few more questions. Is it biblical to become a burden to people you love or your neighbors because you saw the warnings but you chose not to prepare? Is it biblical to mooch off the hard work and sacrifices of others? And is it biblical to have to live on government handouts even though you had the financial and physical means to prepare and you chose not to? God is not your provision genie. He is a holy God that gave you eyes to see, ears to hear, and a brain to use. So do your part. Next, let's talk about the criticism that prepping is a waste of time and money. This one will be much quicker. Prepping is a waste of time and money if you don't do it right. If you don't eat rice and beans very often and you buy 50 pound bags of rice and beans and you don't store them properly and they expire, then you just wasted time and money. However, if you just buy more of what you normally eat and you rotate it into your meals and you store it properly so it lasts a long time, then you are actually saving money. This is because inflation is out of control right now, especially with food. So that means that if you buy a $3 can of soup today and you buy a lot of them, you are locking in a lower price because that can of soup a year from now could be $5. So when you buy more of it today at a cheaper price, you're locking it in. Prepping is actually a hedge against inflation. Food is going to get much more expensive in the future and some items are going to be very hard to get. Don't believe me? Well then let's talk about our next argument against prepping. Things are never going to get that bad here and besides nothing's even happening that would lead me to become a prepper. I have actually had a handful of people say that to me before. You said to buy extra food so a few months ago we bought extra food and have water stored and nothing is even happening. You know what? You're right. Nothing has happened in the last two years that would ever want to cause anyone to have extra food and water and daily necessities on hand. I mean, this whole prepping thing is really silly. I mean, I should be making videos about how to make the perfect pot roast, you know, and, and I feel like I'm wasting my time. This is dumb. I, I should be spending my extra money on like important things like a boat or maybe some designer shoes because those are good investments. I mean, wars, rumors of wars, deadly pestilence, nations rising against nations, famine, and a loaf of bread costing a whole day's wage isn't even talked about in the Bible, right? I mean, this whole preparing for the future thing is dumb. Besides, this is America. We don't do apocalypse. We do Netflix. We don't do starvation. We do vacation. We don't do rations. We do fashion. America isn't for containment. We're about entertainment. In all seriousness, guys, hard times are here, are coming, and are going to get worse here in America and the rest of the world. If you still can't see a need to prepare with what's going on in the news and what's happening right in front of our very eyes, then all I have to say, I guess, is enjoy your $25 loaves of bread, your government handouts of cricket meatballs and soy soup, and if you think you're going to go to your prepper friend's house and eat your way through their hard work and sacrifice, then I would encourage you to take a moment and think about what that says about your character. We are not here to be your apocalypse sugar daddies and mamas. We are here to lovingly encourage you to prepare for your future so that we can actually help people that don't have the financial or physical means to prepare for themselves. Not people who are just too stubborn, cheap, or lazy to do the work. And if that offends you, then good. Let it pierce and then let it lead you to do something about it. Please. We are here to help you and we will answer your questions if you have them. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to like this video and subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. I also have a website, goodpatriot.com, that you can check out, an email list you can subscribe to on my website. Um, if you don't know where to start and you want to start prepping, just start with going to the store this week and buying a couple extra cans of food or a couple other uh, extra things that you normally eat and put them in your pantry. Buy a couple cases of water and just start there. And then also I have a video called How to Fight Back, Part 3, Rations, and that will get you started with more long-term food and water storage. Um, 
I hope this video gave you some information that you can pass on to your loved ones if they are resistant to prepping. And if you are one that was resistant to prepping, um, thank you for your time and I appreciate you giving me a shot to convince you that prepping is actually a good and godly thing. All right, guys, get those seeds in the ground, get that food in the pantry and get that water in the water storage thing of your choice. All right, I will see you again soon. I'm Good Patriot and God bless.